Hey guys, so today we're talking about the four types of watches every guy should own. Hey guys, welcome back to Gents Lounge. I'm George, this is Blake. If you have not hit that subscribe button yet, hit that right now, we really appreciate it. We are here every week talking about men's fashion, lifestyle, cooking, whiskey, cigars, watches. anything every gentleman needs to know. But today, we're talking about watches, and specifically the four types of watches every guy needs to own. Now this isn't about the brands, the, the price, the price yeah. nothing. It's about the look of the watch. So if you wanna spend 20 bucks, on a watch that looks like this, or you wanna spend a couple hundred thousand dollars on a watch that looks like this, be my guest. But I'm gonna tell you right now, most people do not give a shit about your watch. No. So we're just gonna talk about the style and how to fit them into your wardrobe with what you are wearing. Now to begin, George and I broke us up into two different categories, classy watches and casual watches. Right guys, and obviously casual watches are more your everyday watches you're wearing with your casual outfits, and classy watches are going to be the watches you're wearing more dressed up and suited. So starting off, we're gonna talk about some casual watches and what to look for in a casual type watch. And I think there's definitely two types of casual watches you should have, like a rugged, rugged, I don't give a shit kind of, like I'll go camping or you know get this dinged up, I'll do work in this watch kind of thing. And then maybe more of a having lunch with the boys kind of watch where you know it's still a nice watch, and you don't really want to mess it up, but it has more of a casual look to it. So I like to kind of compare this to like my denim, okay? So I have the denim that I use when I'm on my motorcycle or I'm working on a car. Then I have the denim that I use when I'm going out, maybe to like a nice bar, but it's not too formal. You know, just two different types. You know, one that's really rugged and one that's kind of, you know, more dressy. Right, and okay, so the, for the first like rugged, rugged watch, I recommend something with a NATO strap or a rubber band. Just because if you're gonna go camping and you you know you get something wet, you can get it wet. It's not gonna ruin a leather band, and it's gonna be able to take a beating, and you can switch it out very very easily because NATO straps slide on and off. I have this one from Timex. I think it's like 50 bucks. This one from Jack Mason is I think 200, and you know they both look great on your wrist. They're both gonna get the job done. They're both gonna tell time, which is what a watch does. All right, guys, and for the second casual watch, the kind of nicer going out to lunch kind of watch. Honestly, it's really as easy as going from NATO strap to leather strap. Yeah. So I think you know you can have a more busy face, you can do the chronographs, you can have a little bit more fun with things, but if you add a leather band to any casual, casual watch, it takes it to a, a next level, but it still keeps it casual. But I do think if you are a rugged, rugged guy, these should be two different watches, because one, you know, you don't want to wear a watch that's got all these dings and nicks and scratched up face you kind, of want to, you, you kind of still want it to look nice. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, a lot of this is very fluid. So you know, some of these watches blend in between the, the casual and formal vibe. You just kind of got to feel it out for yourself, but this is just kind of some examples that we think fit in those categories. All right guys, so now moving to the other end of the spectrum, the classy end, we're talking about formal watches. So these are the watches you really dress up, like you're gonna wear with a tuxedo yes. and like very, very formal events. So really, I think you should have a leather band, it should be a very, very thin case, and the face should be very, very simple, no extra dials going on. Maybe the only thing extra you should place on there is probably, maybe, a date. Like yeah. a little date window, nothing yeah. big. Exactly, so you wanna go for a classy look. You wanna throw out all those GMTs or those Panerais that are just very big and very bulky. It's not about that, it's about looking the occasion, being classy, being sophisticated, and dressed up for the occasion. Right, guys. I mean, I have this Parmigiani watch, which I'm in love with. It's super expensive, and I really wanted to wear it for my wedding. And it's not a formal watch. It's really not. And I've tried to convince myself, like, you can do it. You can pull it off. It'll work. And I, ultimately, I did not. I wore this Zodiac watch, which you know has an interesting Manta Ray case. Um, and is very, very sleek, simple, fit under my cuff seamlessly. Because you know, if you've got a big watch and it just gets caught on your cuff, it's gonna yeah, look, it look terrible. big and bulky. And like Blake said, just because you have a Rolex does not mean 
it's a formal watch. Just because it's expensive yeah, yeah. does not make it formal. Honestly, dude, that's like a pet peeve of mine. I hate when I go to like like a nice gala or to a, a nice presentation and you see somebody who looks the part, very dressed up, nice peak lapels, bow tie, but they have a GMT on. You know, a GMT is is a uh, a metal band, guys. Just it's bulky. a sport watch. It's a sport watch, exactly. And they're wearing it. It just looks tacky. It doesn't even look nice any longer. Right now, on the other end, if you want to wear a GMT with a suit to a business meeting, go for it. Yes. You know, we're, we're just talking about formal, formal, classy occasions like bow tie, white tie, black tie kind of thing. Up next would be kind of the business meeting watches. So these are going to kind of bleed in between your casual watches and your dressy watches. But basically, you know, have a nice leather band. You can you can have a little more fun with the face. You can yes. do a chronograph. Um, but I do say, you know, if you can get it in gold or, you know, have a nice leather band, it's going to look really nice with a suit. You don't want to do like a field watch no, 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 no. or a diver watch, really, unless it's... But now would be a good time to have fun with the mechanism. So if you're a watch guy and you, you get geeked out about the movement and you want the watch to show it, semi-formal would be the perfect time, guys, because you could really, really just have a ball. It could be kind of big and kind of bulky because you're, you know, you're, you're not going to like a classy event. It's just maybe a meeting or you're hanging out on a date or you just do something that's not required for you to wear a bow tie. Right, like we have these two watches here. They're both, you know, mesh bands, but they're both completely different. So this Shinola has kind of a little gold and silver going on, so it's mixing metals, which I personally like. And then we have this Tissot tachometer that's pretty much, you know, it's got a lot going on in the face. Just to put in layman's terms, guys, if your watch is either a pilot's watch or a diver's watch, it's typically, it's typically gonna be a semi-formal type of watch or a casual type of watch. You know, it's, it's it like weeds into that fine line where you, you could do both. Right, like if you're, if you're buying, you know, a Rolex and you're gonna go Submariner, GMT, any of those, those are going to be in between both. So you can wear them, that, that can be your brunch with the, with the boys guys or it can be your business meeting watch. And honestly, if you're spending that much money on a watch guys, you should get as much use out of it as you can. Yes. Totally agree. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up our video on the four watches every guy should own. If you have not hit that subscribe button yet, hit that right now. Remember, guys, if nothing else, get one casual and one classy watch, and you're you're good to go. Yes. But you know, if you want to separate it into four categories, these would probably be the categories we would separate them into. And once again, this is not about price. This is not about brand. It's all about aesthetic and how the watches look. There are a ton of watches at every price point that look this way and they all tell time. So, you know, that's all that really matters. If you're a watch geek and you wanna, you know, really get into the heritage and the movement of things, that's be my guest, that's on you, but don't judge other people for the watches that they like to wear. Buy watches that you like and buy watches that you can afford because what one thing most people won't tell you about really, really nice watches is you have to get them serviced. Yeah, you do. So if you're spending, you know, a couple thousand dollars on a watch, you're spending another 500 to 1,000 every two to three years to get it serviced, which people don't tell you about. So just know that also, guys. And once again, that wraps up our video. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. We really appreciate it. We'll be here every week with new videos, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks, Cheers, guys. guys.